the wheels of justice turn slowly sometimes. And that was the case here, and, but they, they got it done. 27 years after rapper Tupac Shakur was shot to death in a car in Las Vegas, a man who confessed to his involvement in the crime is behind bars. Who shot Tupac? I'm gonna keep it for the cold of the streets. It just came from the back seat, bro. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey predicted an arrest on law and crime nearly two months ago. I think that they are going to close this case. I, I think that there is very likely going to be an indictment. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. Las Vegas Metro Police took Dwayne Keefe D. Davis into custody Friday. He's being held on charges related to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. Las Vegas Metro Police searched Davis's home in Henderson, Nevada, in July. Oh, oh hell no, they was on his ass. At the same time, a grand jury was investigating Tupac's murder. Tupac Shakur was shot as he was riding in a car driven by Suge Knight one night in September 1996. Tupac had gotten into a fight with a man named Orlando Anderson at the MGM Grand during okay. a Mike Tyson fight. The shooting of Shakur was believed to be retaliation for the fight. Keefe D later confessed that he gave Anderson, who was his nephew, the gun to shoot Tupac Shakur. He made the statement in a proffer to police, Yikes. but the statement could not be used against him in court. Years later, Keefe D admitted his involvement in Tupac's murder in his book, Compton Street Legend. Many view the book as a confession. Keefe D wrote about that night, I pulled out the Glock that Zip had given me and tossed it in the back seat. Bubble Up did the driving, Baby Lane and Freaky were riding in the back. These are incredible names for these people. Bubble Up, Freaky D, Suck Me Off, Zip. These are incredible names for people. That's crazy. Shout out, shout out to the names, man. Like two rams locking horns, Suge and I looked each other dead in the eye. The terrified expression on Suge's face read, damn them N-words. He goes on to write, one of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back. Tupac Shakur died Yikes. days later and his murder would remain unsolved for years. Orlando you know, but you know what's funny about criminal cases? And, and this is, America's amazing. All right, so he snitches in a book. 20 some odd years ago, he snitches. Says what happens. And here we are, 20 years later, um, and some shit is just now happening. I think that's crazy. And Anderson was shot to death the next year. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey oh, worked with retired LAPD detective Greg Kading on the documentary Murder Rap, which looked at Kading's investigation into the murders of Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. I spoke with Dorsey about the news that Dwayne Keefe D. Davis had been taken into custody. Um, well, this has been for me, you know, kind of a 10 year journey since we put out our doc uh, murder rap, um, which was the first documentary that put out his taped confession um, to, that, that his crew did this. And my reaction is that this has just been a very long time coming and um, very, very, it's just an exciting day to finally have this. We, we didn't think this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, at a certain point, it just seemed like so much time had gone by. Um, you started to wonder, is it really going to happen or not? Um, but the wheels of justice crazy, turn bro. slowly sometimes. And that was the case here, and, but they, they got it done. You said that you thought an indictment would be coming, but now you're saying you didn't think this would ever happen. So, uh, sure. do you feel like it was taking too long because we had heard some rumblings that a grand jury was looking at this. I'll just say initially we had heard that it was going to happen very quickly. It seemed like uh, it seemed like an indictment was you know six weeks ago, and it was also crazy. Is like his Tupac is dead, of course. His mom is dead. I think he has a sibling because I I watched his little the movie. Uh, let me see, Tupac sibling. Uh, okay, so he has six siblings. Um, yeah, he has some siblings. He has some half sisters and stuff like that. Um, so he was born to her second husband, although it wasn't Tupac's biological father. He was raised 
yeah, so he did have a sibling, like a half sibling that was there. Um, but it sucks that his mom, I say that to say it sucks that his mom won't be able to get any, um, you know, sort of closure in real life, in real life. You know, you get, you, you talk about closure in the afterlife and stuff like that, but there's no closure from this situation for, you know, the half sister gets it. Um, but yeah, his mom died in 2016. Doesn't get any, doesn't get any closure from that. They have this guy, this guy who's been parading it around for about 10 years. So when she was alive, he was talking about it. An indictment was like happening and then and then nothing. And we heard the grand jury was convening and, you know, it was very airtight. They're not telling us anything. I'm, you know, they're not telling the public anything. So you do start to wonder after weeks and weeks go by if they're really going to pull it off or not. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, what kind of witnesses do you think they have? Because everybody else that was in that vehicle that night is dead. Yikes. Sure. I know um, some of the people that they've spoken to, but I, I can't disclose that. But correct. I mean, all three of the other people that were allegedly with Keefe in the shooter's vehicle, they've all died since this happened. Um, some of the key witnesses, like Tupac's bodyguard, are, is dead. Tupac himself, of course, being the closest witness, is dead. Suge Knight, being the next closest witness, will probably never talk about it. Um, so I don't know exactly who, who they've spoken to that could help them build, you know, a case around Keefe. But I do know that when Murder Rap came out, we re we heard from a lot of people that had information on this case who, that had never disclosed it before, who said that it basically filled in the gaps for them of what they already knew. So my guess is that that's who they've been talking to is people like that who have pieces of the story. And when you put them all together, it's like this tapestry that comes together mm -hmm. uh, of a case. In some of these interviews, Keefe D seemed very cognizant of the fact that he had to be careful about what he said. So he obviously he knew want to that be he still a was at risk of possibly being prosecuted. But then he goes and writes this book. Right. Yeah. He you need hey, if you need money, you might do some crazy things. I I understand that he probably may have thought he could still be prosecuted, but first and foremost, he didn't want to be labeled as a snitch. I don't know if y'all see that movie paid in full, but um, I think what is that Alpo Alpo had gotten out of jail and this is decades paid in full happens the, the actual story about what happens in Harlem happens in like the 80s and you know d decades I'm talking about decades have gone past 30 years 40 years have gone past and Alpo is out in New York and they end up you know ending his life end up ending his life but he probably didn't want to be labeled as a snitch but at the same time you need that money? You got a juicy story to tell? Write a book. When he did his interview with BET for Death Row Chronicles, which came out in 2018, he had an attorney with him uh, mm. present for that interview. And then after that, I don't know how much legal counsel he was getting. It's almost like when that came out and nothing happened to him, I think, I, I wonder if maybe he got lulled into this sense of, oh, I guess That's I'm when not going to do on anything. Black. That's when he went I'll on black. I'll just keep yeah. doing interviews and I'll be careful on my own and do what I think you know, I can get away with saying without going too far. Wow. Um, but yeah, it seems clear. I mean, the fact that you bring a lawyer with you to an interview to make sure you don't say too much does tell you that he must have, at least in the back of his mind, considered that he might still be able to be prosecuted for this. Mm -hmm. And a proffer deal when he did his original, you know, uh, statement to the police about this, you know, 15 years ago, that only covers what he says that day in that meeting. Mm -hmm. If he went on CNN that night, and said the same story, they would be able to use that interview against him. So he, sure. I think he knows full well he had to be careful what he said. So what do you expect to come next? Um, obviously, Keefe D had to know something might be coming since a search warrant was executed on his home. Sure. We um, we don't know what the charges are yet. I'm hoping that if there's a um, that if there's a press conference today, that they'll tell us what what he's actually being charged. Let's let's look into that. I do want to I do want to look into his. Um... Damn, I do want to look into the Vlad interview, but boy, oh boy, that's tough. That all of them, uh, one count of murder with the use of a deadly weapon and with the intent to promote further or assist a criminal gang. That's what they say. That's what they say. And it's crazy because like Chad is saying, I, I mean, this man has, he is, he has been on Vlad 
TV talking about this stuff for decades. Oh, Vlad is saying uh 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 he think he thought he had a, a who he thought he had immunity. He said he thought he had immunity. Hold on. Wow. So let's talk about what happens next. You know, based on what the book says, uh, Zip uh, gave you a Glock, gave you guys a Glock, and you guys tossed it in the back seat. And uh, Bubble Up was a driver, and crazy uh, Baby names. Lane and Freaky were in the back seat. We were just all in the car together. Okay. This was the white Cadillac. Yeah. Okay. Vlad gonna paint that picture. Now so you guys are driving around. <laughs> And then you hear these girls say, Tupac, Tupac. No, uh, we coming up, uh, what's the name? What's that, Flamingo? Yeah, I think that's Flamingo. We was coming up Flamingo and uh, got to the light. We used to go uh, drink and smoke some weed. And he happened to be hanging out the window. He was hanging out the window like he was in a parade. Tupac. Yeah, he was. So what happens next? And we just came, and shit. I ain't gonna go into details like that, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, you got it in a book, you, you didn't play it at everything else, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. is a one-handed Well, in the book, you said that as you're driving up towards the, towards the BMW, with Suge driving and Tupac in the passenger seat. And you said that Tupac pulled out a gun. It looked like he was reaching, yeah. Yeah, it did. He okay. Was, yeah. That's the did you actually wow. see a gun? No, I said, once he got the reaching, I got the ducking. So someone from your car That's what happened. started shooting at Tupac and Suge. Lane starts blasting. Um, I will say that's the first time I've ever in my life heard that there was this idea that there was a gun involved from Tupac and from uh, uh, Suge Knight's car. I've never heard that in my life. That's an interesting development. We're just going based off of his words, though. So, hey. You say Suge looks over, he sees you. Yeah. He looks right at you. Yeah, he looks at me. Okay. When he looks over at you... And then, you know, Tupac's busy getting shot. Uh, evidently, the story is Tupac's trying to either get out of the back seat or something. Yeah, what do you see happening inside there? I seen a bullet going through his head. I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. This is so Orlando shot him this car across Dre. He leaned over on the window. We rolled down the window, pop. Who was it? They would throw on my side. I would pop them. You know what I'm saying? But they was on the other side. Right. I'm not going to go into details on that one. Keep your streets on me. But you already, he already told. He already told and this is out. I, wow. Wow, hold on. Let's, let's finish this. But that's, that's, he snitched. Not only did he snitch, um, I think he said teeth go crazy. Stop, y'all, stop. Not only did he snitch, I mean, he laid it out there what he would have did, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe at that point in time, he didn't know Tupac was dead or something like that. But again, this is messed up because all parties involved, and that's the streets. That's what you deal with. That's the consequences. I think a lot of young rappers should, should look at this and say to themselves, although the longest standing rap beef right now is Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. I think a lot of rappers should take this and say to themselves, you know, you get killed. There's not even justice on the other side of that. And the facts and the evidence could be out there, but there's no justice on the other side of this stuff. It's going to be it is what it is for the next 20 something years, 27 years or so. Yeah. I ain't going to go into detail on that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read from the book. Well. So th th Let them buy the book then. Okay. Well, I'm just going to read the, this passage. Uh, the shit was on. Tupac made an erratic move and began to reach down beneath his seat. It was the first and only time in my life 
that I could relate to the police command. Keep your hands where, where I could see them. Instead, Pac pulled out a strap, and that's when the fireworks start, started. One of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back. Wow. The first shot, skin shook in the head, and I thought that motherfucker was dead. I had heard some stories, supposedly that Tupac, that Suge used Tupac as a shield when the bulls started flying, but that's some bullshit. Suge was already wounded, and he was the one that got touched. As the rounds continued flying, I ducked down so I wouldn't get hit. Basically, yeah. White Cadillac arm came out the back seat and started letting off. What, what went through your head when you saw that? They shoot my nigga. So, wow. the bullets started flying. Tupac, uh, Tupac and Shook's car get, get all shot up. Was there, and I, I'd heard different versions of the story, but the one version I heard was that the other, that, that their entourage started shooting back. Basically, yes. Okay. Does anyone from the death row side return fire? Yes. Okay. Damn, Vlad, Vlad better than the police. <laughs> Vlad is way better than nigga got it edited up too. It's it's very digestible. Play this bitch in the court, man. This is it right here. That that's all you need to know. Man, what? Can you say who that was? Yeah, he's no longer with us. Uh Damn. His name was Buntry. Buntry. Uh, one of Shug's right hand guy, our good friend, uh Alton McDonald. He uh, chased the uh, car down. He also received one gunshot to his his vehicle. Uh, his car was shot. One gunshot to Toyota his Supra. vehicle. Black and Toyota him, Supra. And another guy uh, returned shots at that car. Yeah, they, and they saying they left their guns at home. No, they, yeah, they started shooting back. Wow. Then yeah, so, uh, some chicks was in the sea breeze, started following a white sea breeze, right top sea breeze. Why were the girls following you guys? I don't know. Okay. That's crazy. But I guess their window got shot out. Front windshield, yeah. Damn, they shot at the women too? Yeah. And they stopped following you at that yeah, point. exactly. I, I've talked to a couple people that were there about the situation. And from what they told me was that, you know, you guys came up, you know, the car that you were in came up behind Tupac's car. You guys didn't, the cars were not facing each other. No, they weren't facing each other. They were not facing each other. The other lane. You guys got up parallel to them, behind them. And, you know, when you look side at... Side by side. Side by side. So how would you even see Tupac reach for anything if you're driving behind him? We weren't driving behind I'll tell you, we were side by side at the light. Oh, okay. You guys were already side by side. Yeah. Sad, sad story. Um... And it's looking like there's going to be a little bit of closure, you know, coming up on this story, which is is a good thing. But all, I, all I'm seeing through that is, like, there's a bunch of people involved that are no longer with us. Damn, damn near everybody that they named involved, besides Keefe D, Suge Knight, who's in jail, um... And then the the head of security who was behind Suge, and the other dude that that was sitting next to the other guy on the couch, that's four people involved out of like, what what seemed to be nine people or something like that. Four in that car, two in that car, and then four in the other car. So we talking about probably about like a uh, eleven people in all these cars, and only four of them are still alive. I just. That's that's incredibly sad. That is that is incredibly sad news um about that whole situation, but I will say closure coming out of that situation I think can only be a good thing. It can only be a good thing cuz to be quite frank, you know, every everybody waits for closure. Everybody waits for closure. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that the people that should be getting it are no longer here. I think his mother deserved an answer. You know, 
I think some of these other people deserve an answer, but it you know, it just it just is what it is. Did Tupac have kids? I don't think Tupac had kids. 